you all think that feminism in Japan started with Miss Pac-Man? Eh, Negatron cats and kittens. This episode will be the briefest of overviews as this is a very dense and considerable topic. However, I'll be posting a lot of related articles and I really want you to read them. So I just kind of wanted to lay some groundwork because these women are made of awesome. To start with, we have Amaterasu. And she's not your average one of the mill goddess either. Amaterasu is the goddess of the sun. And in case you didn't realize, Japan's also the country of the sun. In Shinto belief, she'd be one of the driving forces in the creation of man and Japan. In fact, if you wanted to follow the lineage of the imperial family, it all starts with her. However, on the other end of the spectrum, we have a pretty different feeling. It was the general consensus that if women weren't up to no good, then you weren't looking close enough. In fact, there were many peoples that spoke of fox demons and the like disguising themselves as women. And why would a fox do a thing like that? Well, to sleep with you and steal your life force, of course, why else? And you ladies all wanted to be called foxy. It's possible the sentiment towards women moved into Japan from China through these fables along with Buddhism and Confucianism, but it certainly took hold. Anyway, in another book, and a pretty famous one by anyone's standards, the first novel ever written, written by a woman, The Tale of Genji, we have a pretty similar sentiment. Prince Genji ever so kindly states, but what was the good of trying to please women? If they were not fundamentally evil, they wouldn't have been born at all. Ro Ro Prince Genji, Baba Ba. So now that we've set up this social background, how did it play out in the lives of actual women? Well, women were even banned from theater to cut down on prostitution and other complications of women, but not that male prostitution didn't just take its place. And on a side note, these men acting as women in theater, called omegata, were the trendsetters and definers of women in their time, which sure makes gender study difficult, doesn't it? Yes, it does. So what were women doing during this time then, if not serving a husband or his parents? Well, the less fortunate were sold as indentured servants to geisha houses or textile factories. Once sold to textile factories, they were forced into dormitories, only released for 12-hour work days, with little food or pay, and often beaten. The terrible treatment of the girls in these factories led to such movements as the Red Wave Society, a socialist women's organization that fought for the working rights of women and other suffrage causes. However, for the girls left in rural towns, they labored long, backbreaking hours in the fields. Now, if you recall that bit about Amaterasu being the goddess of the sun, I'll bring this conversation back full circle to a woman writer who goes by the pen name Thunderbird. Her name is Hiratsuka Raicho. In an effort to make change, she started Seito, or Blue Stockings, in 1911. It was a groundbreaking feminist literature forum in Japan, and she opened her first issue with this. In the beginning, women were in truth the sun. We were authentic human beings. Today, women are the moon. We live as dependents and simply reflect the light that emanates from another source. The tragedies of World War II left many women alone, but reforms that came with the U.S. occupation gave them many new opportunities. Yeah, a heavy topic for today, cats and kittens, but an important one, so make sure to look out for those related articles. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.